Now turn to section four. Section four. You will hear part of a lecture about conserving energy. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty. Pause the recording for one minute. Now listen carefully and answer questions thirty-one to forty. I'd like you to give a warm welcome to our guest speaker today, Dr. Sophia Martin from the Faculty of Science. Dr. Martin is an expert in energy conservation, and she's going to talk to us about ways we can conserve energy in the home. This is a very important subject, as the world we live in is facing dramatic and potentially destructive climate change as a result of our excessive wastefulness and aggressive exploitation of natural resources. Thank you for the kind words, Alice. You are quite right. We face an unprecedented climate crisis, and it is up to each and every one of us to do our bit to help stop global warming. Believe it or not, if we all took some simple steps, we could dramatically reduce our carbon footprint and help protect the environment. It is not a cliche. It is not silly nonsense talk. One person really can make a difference, and I hope that after my speech today, you will understand how. But first, what exactly is your carbon footprint? Basically, it's how much you pollute the environment as an individual, or rather, what volume of greenhouse gas is emitted into the atmosphere because of your day-to-day -day activities. The key to stopping global warming is for each of us to reduce our carbon footprint, and if we conserve energy in the home, we can achieve some truly dramatic results. Our homes are actually very inefficient from an energy conservation perspective. Indeed, more than sixty-five percent of all homes aren't insulated enough. This means that they lose heat, and that homeowners waste a lot of energy, not to mention money, on heating during winter. So, the first step is to fit adequate insulation in the attic and outer walls of your home. This can reduce your heating bills by as much as twenty-five percent. What's more, the government offers grants to people who want to have their homes re-insulated, so it isn't a very expensive process. And you will probably recoup your investment within a couple of years. I would encourage everyone to consider this course of action. Both your wallet and the environment will thank you. Believe it or not, there are even simpler things we can do. For a start, never paint your interior walls in dark colours. Dark colours absorb heat. Therefore, you will waste more energy trying to keep your home warm. Always use light colours on interior walls. Did you know a dishwasher that is fifty percent full uses almost the same energy as one that is ninety percent full? The moral of the story is to wait until your dishwasher is packed before switching it on. It'll save you and the environment. The same is true of most household appliances. So try to use them only when necessary. Another startling fact is that replacing just one normal light bulb with an energy-efficient light bulb will save you twenty-five pounds over the lifetime of the bulb. Now, just imagine the savings if you replaced all the bulbs in your house. Having large windows seems to be in fashion right now, yet it makes no sense whatsoever from an energy-saving perspective. Windows are one of the biggest causes of heat loss. If you have large windows at home, my advice would be to close the curtains and blinds as often as possible. This will help your rooms retain heat. Another simple way to retain heat is to close all inside doors, especially ones which lead into cooler parts of the house. Carpets and rugs are great floor insulators. It's a good idea to have these fitted in rooms where heat retention is an issue. I would strongly advise people to consider erecting solar panels on their roofs. You don't need to live in a constantly sunny place to reap the benefits of these. Even our English weather will suffice. 
solar panels can generate enough energy to heat your entire hot water supply, which is fantastic when you think how much you pay for this service at the moment. And of course, I would encourage people to continue recycling and composting waste. The next generation will thank us if we act now and rightfully condemn us for failing to. Well, I can only hope you have found this speech informative and that I have highlighted the importance of the individual to the cause of environmental protection. Thank you for your attention. I'll hand you back to Alice now. That is the end of section four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Pause the recording for 30 seconds. That is the end of the listening test. In the IELTS test, you would now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the listening answer sheet.